another video. Today's going to be another one of those minimal supply um, projects for those who are either just beginning crafting or paper crafting or somebody who just wants to sit down with their kids and do something easy. Um, this one though, I do recommend a hot glue gun for this. So if you have little ones, that would be like the part you would want to do. Um, so what we're doing are the classic rosettes. Been around for a long time. Um, some of mine I've edged in glitter, um, add some embellishments, some I've layered up to um, rosettes on in different sizes. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've added ribbon to them. Um, I've put a two from on the back so that these can be used on packages. And I'm just using up my scraps. Um, if you've seen the previous video um, with the what I'd be using for the holiday season, I have a pile of scraps off to my left here. So anything I've been using and it gets cut down into, you know, strips or it's what I call ugly paper, um, it gets put into um, the scrap pile. And then I use those scraps to make embellishments with. And it's just layering up. Um, and if you think, okay, well, I don't have dies. You don't need dies. You can have punches. If you don't have punches, that's where these little guys come in handy. Okay. Your ribbon twine, you don't have to even put that on. You could punch a hole and put fishing line through it or string or yarn or <clears throat> that one. Uh, Dollar Tree right now has um, some of their ribbons that they're coming out with for Christmas. Um, Andrew said Walmart is just inundated with Christmas supplies. Um, and then mine I'm going to package up like this. My tab here at the bottom so that it can be pulled out. This one I used this. Mini Snowflake Rosette one of the steel rule dies <clears throat> and that's what created it, it cuts out two, two star, um, snowflakes the larger one and the smaller one and then I just layered them together on top of a rosette okay so we are going to do this two different ways I have my glue gun on getting hot ouch yep it's hot not a smart move to stick your hand right down on it. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Alrighty, so we are going to start with the absolute basic way first. I wanted to check a price on the, the scoreboards um, at Walmart to see what their prices are on the only because I think just about everybody has a Walmart um, close to them. And I didn't do that. Um, if I think about it and when Andrew edits this I'll have him drop a note in as to what they're running at Walmart but if you do want you know to have just a small one for small projects these are absolutely perfect and there's other things that you can do on the back as well make envelopes and cards and rosettes and there's all kinds that you can do with these boxes um, and the, the small ones are relatively inexpensive. I know the big ones I just priced last night, and they were running between twenty and thirty dollars, depending on brand. So these ones I would think would be ten dollars or less. But they're, it's a handy little piece to have, and the footprint is like minimal. But if you don't have that on hand right now, no, no problem. We just need a piece of paper. That can be any length. Um, some most of the time, the longer the better. Um, you'll get more. The longer you have it, the more ridges you'll get. The shorter you have it, um, the less ridges you'll get. <clears throat> so these are one and are these one and a half or are these two? 
these are the two which I got a grid on my which is what we're going to use so these are two by 12 and 12 by 12 paper you can get at Walmart um, you can get uh, da, 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 let me see nope not that this this is in the stationary section at Walmart it is the pen and ink brand and it is listed as 110 pound cardstock now that's not like 110 pound cardstock that you're going to use from like a card base that's 110 pound cardstock from legitimate cardstock um, companies this is what you like you run through your printer and whatnot but it is sturdy enough to make the rosettes with I've used it to make in um, inexpensive boxes with which is actually what I use um, for prototypes and this is one I did last night so it does hold up really well and it's like I think like eight dollars for the whole big pack of it and it would be perfect for these and then you can glitter them up make them any color you want color them stamp on them make patterns on it Alrighty, so I have my pretty side up. I'm going to flip that. Glitter and all. Alright, now since I have a uh, grid here, I'm going to go ahead and use it. But you do not have to. Put my ruler down here first. <clears throat> Grab me a pencil. Hopefully this one's got lead in it. And I'm going to put a mark at half an inch. I'm going to bring my ruler up here and I'm going to make pull this over here so you can see better <clears throat> I'm going to line my ruler up here with this and give myself a half inch line and now every half inch I'm going to put a line now if you don't have a grid line there no problem just put your ruler down and give yourself a mark every half inch and then go back and connect oh excuse me oh sorry I couldn't even have time to turn the camera off to block that one I'm so sorry so then just go back and connect your lines here to the other half of your paper like so okay and you want to do that the whole way along on both of your pieces I suggest doing it on the back because then it won't be seen because you're not going to want to go back and erase all those alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to start folding that Okay, I already have one done here because it's just repetitive. What you want to do is start one of your pieces with your first flap up and then fold it down on your pencil line. Then up and down, up, down, up, just like an accordion. Okay, now on your next piece, you're going to start with your tab going down. That is the only two things you really need to remember. And if you forget, it's not a big deal, just when you go to glue them together, if they're not going to sit right, chop one off and go line up. Alright, so we're just going to continue along here and make like an accordion, um, concertina, um, mountain and valleys. I'm trying to think of all the different ways I've heard this style of folding called. But I'm just taking that, bottom, that pencil line, putting it at the bottom, bringing this piece up. And if it doesn't line up perfect, it's okay. It's just a rosette. It's not the end of the world. Okay. That pencil lines down, so we're going to bring the paper up, and then we're going to bring it down. Now, if you do do it with a scoreboard, it's going to make things easier for you because you're going to have those lines already in place, <clears throat> and it'll automatically want to fold. But this can be done just as easy. Up down up down up down that's all there is to it 
And then when you get it all together, try to keep it, you know, as straight as possible. It's not going to be perfect. It's okay. All right. You give that a smush, and then it pops out like so. So you want to do that twice. All right. So we have this tab going down on this piece. We have this tab coming up on this piece. That's because these are going to sit together just like so. They're going to glue together like this. <clears throat> you can use your hot glue gun for this. Um, if you have a craft glue like Aileen's or something thick, um, like a tacky glue, I would not suggest like Elmer's glue or school glue from like the dollar stores and whatnot only because they have a lot of water in them and water will cause the paper to warp and then they're not going to dry um, the glue's not going to grab as quick either and you don't want to be sitting here holding this for three days waiting for it to grab okay so that goes together like that now we're going to flip this around oh, so you could use your hot glue gun here as well just to glue these together just be careful of your fingers gonna put a little glue on there uh, I'm trying to think what Walmart carries besides the leans I don't know if they carry the Tombow or not that's a good one these your fingers sticky if you get it on there but it washes right off but it grabs quick um, I know they carry a leans so you want something along that line all right so now we have those two glued together. Now we have this. Okay. No, Ebony, you are not coming up right now. All right. So if you have a punch, you can use a punch. We're going to need two of something. You do not have a punch. Just get yourself a piece of scrap paper. All right, now this is the, I think, the most difficult part of this, is trying to tell the paper that you're going to want it to go in on itself. So I take mine, and I'm going to push my sides in to get it to go flat. Okay? It's going to want to pop right back up. So you got to tell the paper you're going flat. Okay? And then start to push it in. And see, it wants to pop right back up. This is where the hot glue gun comes into play. And uh, yeah, because you you definitely do not want to sit here with um, wet glue and try to get this all to go together and stay there. It just I'm sure it's possible. I don't have the patience for that. All right. So what I do, I kind of I kind of let um, some of it come apart a little bit because I want to try to get some glue down into into these grooves. So when I squish it. It's going to squish all together. And just watch your fingers. Definitely, if you're working with your kids, definitely the adult part of the process. I kind of work it together a little bit, get some of that glue down in there, and then smush it as tight as you can get it together. Okay, and when I think that's kind of grabbed a little bit, I'm going to grab my piece of paper that I've cut, and I'm going to smush that down in there. Now I'm pushing pretty hard, because I want that glue to get down in that hole okay and then you're left with that and sometimes it'll still want to pop up which is not a big deal we're just going to do the same thing to the back I'll put a blob of hot glue on the back and pop our second circle on there okay now for the next one I already have one of these. I should not have went ahead and scored the whole thing, but it's the same process. 
only with the board here. We're gonna just use our stylus and score at every half inch. So half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and keep going down like that. And that's gonna give you these nice score lines that are gonna keep things even and just help fold things a little easier. So I'm gonna start up and that's automatically going to push that down, then up, and down, up, down, up, and so on. And once you get those um, lines in from the scoreboard, it, it just makes it easier to push together. But as you can see, you can do it with a pencil and a ruler as well. And the, let me see, this one here, this small one up top, I did at every quarter of an inch. So as long as your increments are the same the same width the whole way down, it doesn't matter if you do quarter inch, half inch, three eighths of an inch, six or what do you say? Uh yeah, whatever. As long as they're all the same distance, that's all that matters. <clears throat> Alrighty, so let's glue this one together. And again, we have our single flat pointing up, our double flat pointing down. And this is where I'm using that kind of ugly paper. This is a great um, use for that because you cover a lot of it up. Like the animals in this pack were really cute, but some of the paper, it's like really Christmas. It's like fish bones. Yeah, I don't know. But I do have some of the pieces left for it so I'm going to go ahead and do one so I can get it used up so that goes on there like so All right now we're going to spin it around and we have our single tab that's kind of here on the end flopping and our little V on that end we're going to sit the V down over top of that just like so two pieces again ebony you are not coming up right now I got the glue gun on the table and since I have punches I'm just going to go ahead and punch those All right now time to tell the paper who's boss and push it in that's the easiest way I've found to get it to want to go is just take the two sides and push them in and then it collapses All right then take your other fingers and just start working it inward Okay, and kind of position your fingers so that you can get glue in the creases there. And watch your fingers. Okay, work that a little bit and then push it together. All I'm doing when I'm doing that is trying to get that glue pushed down in there and into the crevices a little bit. And so once I see that's kind of grabbed, then I grab one of my pieces of paper and I smush that down in there. And it hold. Okay. Now this one here, you can see it's, it's wanting to pop up. The other one didn't. I didn't get as much glue down in this one. Okay, so that hole there, we're going to take our glue gun and we're going to put glue in that hole. And again, I'm just going to kind of let that glue work down in there a little bit. And pop our top. Up. Like so. be careful doing that too because that's that glue still comes through pretty hot <clears throat> okay so there's that one now embellishments you can use a punch and put 
some circles on and heat emboss them and you know whatever you want to do if you don't maybe you don't have that okay not a problem I think all the stores right now are getting their um, Christmas decorations and stuff out these are all fussy cut from the gift tags okay so there's lots of those and you can get tons of these for like a dollar and then you can just pop one of those in the middle just like so that's what I did on this one the only difference was I added Oh, below me. There. I added um, glitter to the edge. Okay, so those are an option for you. So that can be decorated up any way you wish. If you wish to add glitter. Now, let's see what color of glitter do we want to add. This is like that pink shade stuff. I think it might look cute on that one. Alrighty. Andrew, do you have a piece of coffee paper? Alright, good one. That would be great. So this would be where you want to use, your, again, your, um, like your craft, thick craft glue. This is in just a little bottle. You can either go directly on what I was doing, which made it easier for me. Yeah, I got a piece of black here. Oh, I got a piece of blue that'll work. Something you can see on... I'm just going to put some of that glue out. Okay. And dab my finger into it. And just pounce some of that off. Go along the edges here. That's how I got this look. This is a way to use up your scraps. Use up those like weird pattern papers because every pad has them. I don't, I don't think we've ever bought a pad that hasn't had some paper and it's like, what? How am I going to use that? Well, this is one of the ways you can use that. I think we're just about done here. set that aside so I don't stick my fingers down in it. I'm not sure how this is going to work because this is that um, looks like almost like confetti. So I just make a pile of it and stand my rosette up in it and smush it down in there. Oh that's pretty. One of the few times a year I would actually use glitter. I did miss that spot though. I either missed it or it dried already. So we'll go back and add some to it. Just roll it in there. And this would be a good one for your, you know, let your kids help with or. flip it over and tap those top it ah tap those edges down in 
just like so. That is really pretty. Went from that ugh, paper to actually like that. All right, so now we're gonna put this back because I really don't want that all over the floor. I've had glitter spill once. That was not fun. That looked like a unicorn took a crack all over the office. I was not happy. It certainly made a mess. Sorry to be blunt about it, but that's exactly what it looked like. Um, let's see. Do we want to put glitter on the other one? I'm trying to see what I have up here. I think I'm going to leave this one plain for right now. So then, like I said, at this point, you can add whatever decoration you choose. <clears throat> um, this is one of the... This is one of the strips of paper that came from this paper pad. I may fussy cut one of these cats and put in the metal since it's fish bones. I think that's what I'll do. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera because you can embellish this, uh, you know, any way you want at this point with whatever supplies you have. I said everybody's coming out with their Christmas decorations now, and these tags I think you can get like, oh my gosh, probably at least twenty or so for a dollar in a in a pack and then just you know fussy cut them apart and nobody will be the wiser as to you know you took that from a tag and it gives you inexpensive embellishments the same way with this little guy and by fussy cut I just mean take the the image you're you know they come in the little squares cut the back off I threw that away and then just very carefully go around and trim out the image that you want and lots of inexpensive um, decorations that you can put on these now if you I don't know where my little punch is at if you want to hang them take a paper punch you don't need one this big a regular paper punch will work <clears throat> I'm not sure where mine's at right now you can put a hole in there and run a string through and hang them up. Okay. So they can be hung, they can be turned into gift tags, you can hang them on your tree, you can put them on a package for decoration, and hang them from your windows. So the sky's uh, the limit with them. So I hope that's something you know that you can take and make your own and again do with your kids or you know make some decorations for yourself and it's something else you can do with very minimal supplies so okay guys until next time please take care and we'll talk to you soon bye bye